I'm going to explain how cholesteatoma forms and how we treat it. It's useful to watch the video explaining middle ear disease before watching this video. If the ear tube between the back of the nose and the middle ear is not working well, the air pressure in the middle ear drops down and the eardrum starts to suck inward. In the early stages, this can be treated by inserting a middle ear ventilation tube and is completely reversible. If the tube between the nose and the ear doesn't start to work with growth, the change in the air pressure can be permanent and the eardrum can continue to be sucked inward. As the eardrum sucks inwards, it forms pockets, a little bit like shrink wrapping a plastic bag. The lining of these pockets gradually builds up dead skin cells and starts to become inflamed. And this lump of inflamed dead skin cells behaves like a tumour and starts to damage or wear away at other structures in the ear or things around the ear. This can lead to really serious disease. The first thing that happens is usually hearing loss due to damage to the small chain of bones that run from the eardrum to the inner ear. Further damage to hearing can happen if the cochlea is damaged. The next thing that can happen is damage to the balance organ and this can lead to vertigo and problems with balancing. The ear sits just below the brain and there's a thin plate of bone separating the ear from the brain. If the cholesteatoma wears away the bone between the ear and the brain, it's possible to get severe infections around the brain like meningitis. There's a nerve that runs from inside the skull to the face and it makes one half of the face move. Cholesteatoma can damage this nerve and cause paralysis in the facial muscles. If cholesteatoma is not treated, all of these complications can happen over a few years. Treatment reduces the risk of these complications. For more information, please ask me, my practice nurse, or look at our website.